We've received quite a bit of interest in my free to be workshop. So to that effect, beneath this video is a link that will give you a description for the workshop. And we've also included a special discount. So if that's something you would be interested in, I would invite you to click that link and I hope that you would find the course to be quite beneficial. Would you ever think of narcissism as being a pattern of life that actually is anchored in an addictive mindset? And we tend to think of uh, that word addiction in stereotypes. We think of people that are addicted, let's say, to drugs or various substances or alcohol or sexual addictions. And sure enough, those are uh, patterns of life that we need to be very aware of. And they, there's quite a bit of overlap with narcissism there. But the whole pattern of life that we call narcissism is anchored in a mindset of addiction. Now, to put a perspective on that, there's one simple phrase that we can say uh, defines the way narcissists think when they engage with you. And that simple phrase is, feed me. Okay, narcissists want you to acknowledge that they're the best. They have to have your admiration. They have to have your loyalty. Uh, they must be in the superior position. Uh, they, they crave being uh, uh, honored and uh, considered the, the best person in the room. And so they're constantly engaging with other individuals thinking, what are you going to do to feed my need, to feed my compulsion, uh, to feed my pleasure-seeking desires? I've got to have whatever it is you have to offer, and then I want some more. That's what I'm talking about when I say they have an addict's mindset, even if it's of a behavioral type of nature. Now, there's a word that we use that, uh, that kind of uh, captures the essence of what I'm talking about, or a term that we use, and it's the term narcissistic supply. Narcissists look toward you to give them enough supply so that they can uh, be okay from the inside out and so they can have their momentary fixes. And I want to see if I can uh, uh, hone in on multiple indicators that tell us that narcissists are in fact in that addictive mindset. It's so essential for you to know what drives them because as you know through your own personal experiences, they want to push their, uh, their pathology onto you and make you out to be the problem when in fact, no, there's this, uh, this whole um, uh, problem on the inside of themselves that they have not come to terms with. And I wanna see if we can identify what some of those patterns would actually be. Now, one of the first things that we can say about narcissism that illustrates an addictive mindset is, simply put, they're drawn towards external stimulation as opposed to drawing upon internal calm from the inside out. In other words, what is it out there that's going to make me feel good in here? They've never really developed uh, that sense of well-being from the inside out. Now, that having been said, they are, are also drawn towards patterns of sentimentality. And when I say sentimentality, I, I use that in a very broad kind of way. In other words, what's going to make me feel good? What's going to make me feel like I'm important? as opposed to being drawn towards patterns of character development. When narcissists engage with you, rather than thinking, how can we make each other better individuals by our exposure to one another? <laughs> Instead, it's like, are you going to make me feel good in the moment? And if you do, then let's continue. And if you don't, then there's something wrong with you. And they come on to you uh, in a very harsh kind of way, keeping in mind that add addicts uh, tend to unravel pretty quickly when they don't get what they want. In addition, we can say that part of their addictive mindset prompts them to see relationships as transactions as opposed to seeing relationships as a place to belong. And that's such a key uh, distinction that we have. Uh, when narcissists are interacting with you, it's like, what are you going to do for me now? As opposed to thinking, well, I want to know you from the inside out and I want you to know me from the inside out. And we can have a shared sense of humanity and appreciation and encouragement. They don't think like that. It's simply, what are you going to do for me and how are you going to fix my need in the moment? That's the addictive mindset that they're drawing upon. Now, in addition, and this is uh, uh, very central to what we talk about when we refer to addiction, 
Narcissists are constantly in a, uh, an attempt to escape pain. They're constantly trying to escape the challenges that they don't really know how to manage, as opposed to embracing their own mortality or embracing their own imperfection. It's like uh, narcissists have, have uh, concluded, rightly so I might add, that this world might sometimes be harsh. But instead of saying, okay, I have my strains and difficulties, so do you. Let's see if we can figure out how we're going to, uh, to manage our humanity together. It's like, no, I just need to have some pain relief. And, and as a result, they're inclined towards short-term gratification as opposed to long-term uh, embracing of all the many aspects of humanity. Now, uh, in, in addition to that, as part of their addictive mindset, narcissists operate with a, a mind of devourment uh, or devouring. Uh, they want to devour you. They want to devour whatever it's going to be that's going to make them feel like they're important versus seeking nurturing. They, they don't nurture. They just simply pull people down. And, and as a result, we can see that they're more driven by impatience than patience. It's like, give me what I want and give me what I want right now. Again, feed me, feed me, feed me. Tell me that I'm okay. As opposed to, let's see if we can work together so that we can jointly and mutually find uh, goodness and decency. They don't think like that. Uh, in their addictive mindset, this comes as no shock, they become takers as opposed to becoming givers, and especially givers of encouragement or kindness. Uh, they're, uh, they're driven by short-term impulses. Likewise, these are individuals who tend not to draw upon any particular sense of internal meaning. Now, some of them are intellectual enough where we can say, I know what the meaning of life is, um, but in terms of having a well-conceived sense of purpose about who they are and then um, uh, translating that into real-life habits, they don't have that kind of depth. Uh, they tend to be very shallow in the way that they approach the world and how they see their place in this life. Likewise, as a part of their addictive pattern, honesty comes and goes. Is that a nice way of saying they, they lie easily or they keep secrets? as opposed to honesty being natural or honesty being uh, uh, in, uh, integral, integral to their uh, whole personalities. Uh, likewise, we can say that um, uh, the mood of the moment is what drives them as opposed to having an internal sense of contentment to draw upon. So do you see, even though they may not have the addictions that we stereotypically think of, the mindset is so deeply entrenched in them that they are, in fact, addicted. They're addicted to your responses uh, toward them. They must have you give them what they don't have uh, naturally on the inside out. Now, when you take a look at uh, what's really driving these individuals, uh, it doesn't take uh, a whole lot of uh, discovery to find out these narcissistic individuals are people who have very poor stress management skills. And again, that goes back to uh, the things that are common among addicts. They, they also have lots of unresolved hurt. They have lots of unresolved anger. They have lots of unresolved disillusionment toward key people in their life. But instead of having the skill set that says, I need to address that carefully, they just go off to the side and they try to feed their sense of uh, their uh, neediness in other kinds of ways. Uh, they tend to have a deep history of family dysfunction. And by that, I mean they didn't have the, uh, the privilege of having uh, good emotional management, relational management skills uh, taught to them. Instead, they had lots of modeling that took them in the wrong direction. And, and as a result, their neediness defines them. Uh, neediness along with an attitude of ineptness. I don't know what to do when that neediness shows up. Now, the, the interesting thing is you too can have some of the same kind of strains and difficulties that are in your life. I mean, you've had some dysfunction, I'm sure, in your personal life or hurts and disappointments. But healthy individuals will say, well, when I have these kinds of problems in my life, what does it mean to be responsible? And you take responsibility for it. How do I find peace? And you commit yourself to being a, a, a giver and a keeper of peace. What is the meaning of love? 
Uh, what does it mean to have priorities that benefit both myself and other individuals? There are ways that we can go about those kinds of uh, 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 finding answers to those kind of issues without going into addictive patterns. But let's just say when it comes to the narcissist, they are so stuck in that feed me mentality that they never really get to the place that they need to be. Um, and even when their uh, patterns collapse on them, as is um, so commonly the case with addictions, guess what? It's your fault. And they continue to persist in the mindset that got them in the problem in the first place. So uh, it, it's so important for you to realize that uh, it really is not all about me when I'm trying to engage with life in a good and a reasonable kind of way. And, uh, and strangely, when you say it's not all about me, that's actually when me becomes most stable. Strange how that works. And that's a mindset that narcissists simply are not able to latch on to. Now, I hope that videos such as this can give you a good idea of what you're dealing with when you're engaging with these narcissistic individuals. Like I say, they want to push uh, their neediness and their uh, their interior uh, strains onto you, but in fact, it's their uh, it's theirs to have to come to terms with. Uh, if you've not already hit the subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so, and we're going to keep more videos coming toward you so that you can continue to have a buildup in your awareness and knowledge and insight regarding this pattern so that you can be the better alternative. Likewise, and so hit the subscribe button, uh, and uh, and we'll keep more coming at you. Uh, likewise, I know that there are times when it, it would be good for you to seek assistance from a good therapist. I'm so pleased to be sponsored by the people at BetterHelp.com. I have been for years now. There's a whole team of licensed professional therapists that can assist you. We have a link below that will take you to their website. And I know many of you have taken advantage of that. So seek the therapy that uh, uh, that would be most beneficial to you. In addition, I have my courses, which have a therapeutic value. Uh, the courses... Uh, uh, and it's like signing up for an online class. They have multiple videos and then um, uh, 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 teaching documents that go along with it, guided questions. We have Ready, Set, Connect about making good connection skills. This is me about establishing your boundaries. Free to be finding yourself despite the controllers in your life. We also have my webinars that are available on our website. Uh, in addition, we have uh, my podcast, books, and articles and many other resources for you. It's so important for you to understand the mind of the narcissist so that uh, you're not going to carry the pain that they're wanting to put onto you. Uh, but instead, I'm hoping that you can dedicate yourself to being a, a person of dignity, respect, and civility. And in doing so, it positions you to be the person of peace that the narcissist can only dream of.